Well, that's a perfect place to start, Shane, because I think old Dr. Pepper needs a refund from the Clemson quarterback because his ass is uh, got swarmed by the Georgia Bulldogs here on Saturday night, the mm. big showcase game. You know, didn't quite live up to the hype uh, if you're talking fun and entertainment, unless you're just, uh, of course, Georgia fans loved it. Defensive football coaches love it because yeah. the Bulldogs won 10-3. to The under, <laughs> solid <laughs> bet there. The over-under was around 50-something, only 13 points, and not even an offensive touchdown scored mm -hmm. in the game. But, uh, you know, this is a tone setter, Shane, because I think the Georgia Bulldogs offense, they're never going to play as poorly as they did uh, and and I don't even want to say they played too poorly. I know JT Daniels has the had the one interception that was pretty bad, but to me this just seemed like I think Georgia was trying to prevent Clemson from doing what they were doing to Clemson, which was which is essentially just rattling the quarterback and making him miserable and hitting him on every play and. Uh, the Bulldogs racked up, what was it, seven sacks on the game. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's where the game was won. Was that, and that's something, you know, everybody had talked up leading into it. It was this which offensive line was going to man up, and it was the Georgia Bulldogs. And uh, that Clemson quarterback just did not live up to the hype, did he? But I'm going to tell you, Mike, the, the biggest thing for me that I don't know about you, but it felt like the offense was playing scared. Like, they were afraid they were going to throw a turnover. They were afraid to to take any downfield shots. And it's just I, – I, I don't know. I mean, it worked with this Clemson game, but it easily could have gone the other way, Mike. It easily could have been one explosive play because Clemson sure the hell was trying. They were trying to go deep. And if they could have – if they could have overcame that and, and beat the Bulldogs, we'd be sitting here right now talking about Kirby Smart and the decision making that they had coming into this ball game. Yeah, I mean, uh, I see what you're saying because Georgia basically dominated the entire thing. Yet Clemson had an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, I believe it was right before half to to get in the end zone, right at you know mm -hmm. near the end of the game to get into the end zone. So. You know, it certainly would have been a different story, and the narrative would have been, <laughs> like you were saying, I mean, Kirby throttling back his offense. But I just don't yeah. think they wanted to get JT Daniels killed. And I think that uh, – uh -huh. I don't want to say lack of confidence, but just, you know, when your number one target was uh, Brock Bowers, a freshman tight end, uh, I think that kind of gives you an indication of what they were thinking of what they had with their receivers with – be, got you know guys not in the lineup guys banged up guys yeah. coming back from injury so and again I, I think the after a little while it just seemed like the game plan early on was to get the ball out of JT Daniels hands quickly uh, so he doesn't get yeah. clobbered and I think they just stuck with that because they saw that uh Clemson was not going to threaten this defense I mean they were mm. they were just money on the day you know what yeah well you know I think what pisses me off like what really what it boils down to, Mike, is at the end of this game, I'm listening to them say, well, you know, if they could get past North Carolina State and <laughs> Syracuse, then they're going to be in the, the playoffs, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's the problem, Mike. You left the door open with no offensive production. And I think if Georgia would have done what they were doing last season and, and just let JT play some damn football, I think this would have been an uglier game. And I think we could have closed the door permanently on an ACC, uh, you know, team being in the playoff. But we left it wide open, man. Mm -hmm. They're going to just, I mean, face it. They were telling you at the end of this thing, pretty much, expect Clemson to get another shot. And I hate that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So uh, let's kick it over to Kirby Shade, who talked about uh, the defense's dominant performance here on uh, the offense, never really getting its footing in this matchup. And then uh, kind of the highlight here, uh, him jumping on the bench and celebrating with the fans. <laughs> I didn't know teams were allowed to have 10 three games anymore, but uh, just from as far as a lot of the job of the defensive you know, front did tonight, that front seven, I know you knew they were going to be good going into the year, but did you ever anticipate what you saw tonight? Well, I, I knew we'd be pretty good, and we're pretty deep. I, I'm proud of them. Uh, you know, the, the, it just seems like we're more athletic up there than we've been in the past, and uh, – you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of speed on the field. I mean, when you when we do plays against the scout team and Trevon and Adam are chasing plays down, I mean they're fast, and uh, and they can run. And Dan did a great job calling the game tonight. Uh, defensive staff did an incredible job with the game plan. Uh, the kids were into the game, and you know I think we frustrated them and confused them. And and once you 
I mean, we didn't do real well offensively either, but we did. We did have some moments where we could run the ball. They, 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 they struggled to do that. Yeah, coach. Talking about that pressure on the quarterback, clearly that was something you guys wanted to do. I think six different players uh, might have gotten seven sacks. I mean, did you feel like uh, uh, this that was a form of of strategy uh, that you were able to do it, or was it overpowering? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I have to watch the tape to see. I mean, I felt like we won some one on ones where it wasn't. We didn't even have four people ru rushing. Was, sometimes you affect the quarterback, and sometimes. You, you sack him. Well, we did get some sacks, but some of those were covered sacks. You know, he held the ball, and I think he got confused, and he got frustrated. So, do we have an elite pass rush? I don't know that yet. We, can we affect quarterbacks? Absolutely. We can affect the quarterback and, and be disruptive if we tackle well on the perimeter and, and make space plays, you know, and that's – our guys played really well and tackled well, I thought, tonight. What what was that feeling like with just a back-and-forth struggle and y'all just never could – get uh sort of the kill shot in yeah it's frustrating it felt like we kept letting them hang around right but all we talked about was playing for each other connection resiliency and we we preached so much composure and attention to detail all week and i, I was just so proud because they, they could have i mean they got some momentum right in the second half they went down that red area stop was humongous um to hold them to three and that was a big stop by the defense some things went bad they double moved us but, you know, nobody ever panicked. And that's usually the sign of a good character team, especially when you're playing a, a, a really good team. Um, and Clemson's a good football team. And just, you know, really proud that they never, uh, they never folded. They fought for each other. And also, when was the last time you jumped up on a bench after the game to cheer with the crowd? I was nervous about that jump, Jeff. I said, if I slip, this will be on every camera in America and it'll be on ESPN top 10 or not top 10. I thought that went through my mind. Um, but I was happy and I wanted to, I felt like our fans didn't get the, the love they needed. Our players sprinted into the locker room and I wanted to show them uh, some attention with it. Um, All right, Chad. So I mean, here we had a heavyweight showdown. Felt like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a playoff type atmosphere for week one and love to see that Kirby is recognizing uh, the fans, I don't know if you saw the, uh, you know, immediately after on the field, the post game, he talked, he took a lot of pride in the fact that they went into ACC country where they hold the mm -hmm. SEC championship game and, and whoop the Tigers. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not often we see this side of Kirby. So I just thought this was pretty great. Yeah, man, this is good. I, that's what it's about, Mike. I, I, I think when you look at the entire Saturday schedule and I'm, I'm flipping through game after game, it was just, the fans, you know, just the the getting to get out there. Some of the watching the Georgia game, yeah, it was majority clips in there, but it was it seemed at times that Georgia was the loudest fan base that was present. You know, I just we coming from a year where we had to have these cardboard clip outs of fans in the and it we don't have that. It was actual fans there. It was just. I don't know. It was awesome, and it was a big. It was a big weekend for the SEC, short of, you know, Vanderbilt, which we'll get to. But <laughs> it, everybody won, you know, and and hopefully Ole Miss does the same. And and these fans got to experience that, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah, and only uh, downside, real quick here for Georgia. They just announced this on Sunday. Tate Ratledge, starting offensive lineman, looks like he's done for the year, foot injury. So uh, that's mm -hmm. tough news for the Bulldogs. All right, Chad, next. So, tough, tough news for the barber. Did you see his hair do? <laughs> no. I, I, I mean, how long is this mullet thing going to last, you know? <laughs> Some people can pull it off. Take good. I'm oh, sorry.